What is going on, folk? It's NimbleThaw here, and welcome back to my mobile gaming quest. Where, if you guys have been around for a while here, you'll know that sometimes I cover a game because it's the best, it's fantastic. Sometimes I cover a game because I just want to rant about its bad practices. Sometimes I cover a game because it's new and gaining popularity, and so I want to tell you about it. But today, we're checking out Dawnbreak Nightwitch, because it's the most unique game within its subgenre that I've ever seen so far. So it's a gacha RPG with no auto systems and no inner purchases. There's no inner purchases at all in this game. Well, apart from one, actually, to be fair, to remove the advertisements. That means that everything is unlocked simply by playing the game, going through these campaign levels here, and then by watching reward video ads. What we do have instead, though, is a bombardment of advertisements. Uh, we have an ad before every level, we have an advertisement after every level, and we also have banner ads at the top when we're in the menu screens. But at least we can play the game in offline mode. And that actually makes a big difference, because when we're in offline mode, we don't see any advertisements at all, and then we just have a completely free-to-play, no ads, no in-app purchase, gotcha RPG. And honestly, guys, I have never seen that before, and I don't think we'll ever see that again, um, because it seems that this game doesn't receive the best reviews, mostly because of the high amount of advertisements. But if I were you guys, I would just play it in, in offline mode. But apart from that, what does this game then offer? Well, we have three different characters, and we're playing with one of them right now. It's honestly my favorite character, but I'll go show you guys the different ones afterwards. Combat feels nearly the same with all of them, though, even though one of them is actually a wizard. Um, so that's the, that's the big disadvantage of this game, is that the combat isn't really that interesting. But it's not boring either, it's just that the characters don't feel that different from each other, and that is kind of unfortunate. But there are only three characters also, which is weird, because in many, I would say most gacha RPGs, a big part of the game is all about unlocking these new characters. In this game instead, what we do unlock is new fairies, we unlock new souls, I think they're called souls, and we unlock new equipment pieces. So let's go have a look at that right now, by going back to the menu here, and then heading into this section we go back here, the section over here called exchange, so it's not a shop, it's an exchange where we can exchange gold for different types of items. So let's say we want a new spirit, it wasn't called a soul, it was called a spirit, alright. So let's try to get an epic, maybe epic spirit dust, uh, grant 600 XP to a spirit. Uh, no, you know what, let's go for something more interesting, let's go for a new weapon for the character we're using. And in fact, let's get an epic one, which is the best one, okay. So what did we get? We got a hand piece, it seems. Oh, it, it adds 600 in attack. That's amazing. All right, let's go have a look back here. We go into the hero screen. We click on our character. We go to the equipment, and let's see this new one here. So this one has 607 in attack, whereas the one we had on us before had eight. <laughs> eight in attack. Okay, that's what I call an upgrade, guys. Would you look at that? That's amazing. We can also auto-equip which we should have probably done a bit earlier, because it seems we actually have some better equipment that we could equip also for this character and also for this character over here. So that is how you unlock new equipment, by the way. You go into exchange, well, you grind the levels to get gold, and then you go into the exchange and you buy these loot boxes for just in-game gold. There's also a hero shop over here, but don't be fooled. It's not to unlock new heroes, it's just to get experience potions um, or scrolls that we can use on these heroes to level them up faster. Apart from that, though, we have the fairy over here, as I told you guys. And this fairy adds a bit of extra attack as well. And then apart from that, it adds, as you guys can see here, some HP and a defense boost as well. But that's actually about it for the game, though. We can just go back in here. We can watch an advertisement if you want to, but we can go back in here and play more of these campaign levels. And there are over 100 of those, so you will have some, something to do for a pretty long time if you decide to dive into this game. For this match here, though, I just want to switch to one of the other characters so I can show you guys how different the combat actually is, and you guys can get an idea for yourselves. I would say overall, the game isn't the game isn't the best quality. Uh, it has bad translations, mediocre visuals, but it is certainly a fresh take on the gacha RPG genre, and I do really appreciate that. We don't see a lot of new innovation within this genre, and so can you say that this is a new innovation? I would say you could, uh, especially because the monetization is so different. So it's definitely a monetization innovation in the genre. Do I like it? Would I recommend you guys to play it? And will I keep playing it? I won't personally keep playing this game just because there's so many fantastic games out there and I personally do not mind a bit of monetization. But I know that some of you guys really, really hate in-app purchases. And so that's why I wanted to cover this game and show it off to you guys here today because it might actually just be the game that you guys should go check out. But now, thank you for sticking around till nearly the end of this video because here is the mobile gaming fact of the day. 
And I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've been shown an advertisement for Fun Plus's Guns of Glory more times than I can recall this. Well, past few months, past year actually. And it turns out that that's because the game has earned 215 million dollars in the first year. That's quite insane, honestly. And reportedly, 54 million of that, nearly 25%, came in August this year alone. That's, that's just amazing. Well, I guess, congratulations to those game developers. But have you guys played it? Have you seen the advertisement? Let's discuss that in the comments down below. And until next time, guys, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys. Right.